Good evening, my little darklings. It is a night filled with the strange and the unusual. We have shape-shifting spirits. We have underwater cryptids. We've got mysteries and soldier spirits. And for some reason, NASA will not leave Uranus alone. That and so much more here on The Very Best in Paranormal Programming. I'm Dave Schrader, and this is the Paranormal 60 News. Hello, Darklings. Here we are on a Thursday special edition. Thank you for allowing me one extra day to heal. I am finally two days now into negative COVID tests. I'm feeling so much better. Um, I, I'm just fatigued. That's the only thing is it's just this deep down crazy fatigue. But otherwise, I feel great um, and uh, no complaints. So thank you for all the love and uh, prayers and energy and healing and hoodoo and voodoo and whatever you did to help me, me feel better. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. We've got uh, a lot to discuss tonight. We've got a couple of emails from you, the listeners, and we've got um, probably the most uh, brought up question to me of the entire year. And we're going to cover all of that and more. We are one man down Normally, we don't like to leave a man behind, but in this case, we'll leave his behind right where it belongs. He is off and busy tonight doing work, but joining me here, the two wonders, the wonder twins of Texas, I guess you could say. Ladies and gentlemen, America's greatest hero, the Colonel. I'm so glad that you're feeling better, Dave. Thank you for having me, and thank you for having the show this week, even though you're still in recovery mode. I'm, you know, I'm like I said, baby steps, buddy, baby steps. Baby That's steps, all it takes. Steps. I, I, I feel a lot better. I got to feel a lot better. I'm off to North Carolina tomorrow oh, yeah. for the big investigation of the USS North Carolina. We'll be doing that on Saturday. I'll have some information a little bit later to put up there. Ladies and gentlemen, the one man band is also with us tonight. Please put your hands together for Wisconsin's very own Chachi. Wisconsin. I Wisconsin. like that. Yeah. I was yeah. just having a sip to the uh, the memory of Greg. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard the bad news. No, he's yeah. not lost. He's just oh. working. He, yeah, oh, he's kind of lost, but <laughs> in a totally different way. Yeah, just when he's that. reading. Yeah. So, guys, I I will tell you, I've been inundated with one particular question this week. Okay. Uh, and and it, it's a case that doesn't involve us normally. It's something everybody's been watching play out over the news over the last week here. And, of course, it has to do with the tragedy of the Titan submarine, right? Yep. Um, tragedy that was, uh, you know, God, what just a horrible thing to have happen. And, you know, you just, you want to go down, you want to have an experience of a lifetime and see Titanic. You want to, you know, and the one guy, I think he just came back from, was it the Virgin Atlantic space flight or the Blue Flight or whatever they call he, it? He did the Blue Origin, yeah, with Bezos. Yeah, Blue, Blue Origin. Flights. Wow. And then he was going to go to one of the lowest points in the ocean. And what an amazing life that you could have to spend a half million to a million dollars to see these things. Um, I am, I, I will say this. I, I'm a little dejected by humanity recently. And it, it really kind of hurt my soul watching this thing play out. And there was some guy on TikTok kind of managed it perfectly in a little video that he did where he he kind of brought up, oh my God, the tragedy. I can't believe that it these poor people died in the in the you know the Titan sub explosion. That's oh, this is horrible. Oh, wait, they were billionaires. <laughs> they had it coming. What dicks? I don't understand the rationale. Five people lost it. their lives, and it shouldn't matter what what their wealth or or financial status is it's a tragedy and for people to be petty enough to mock them 
well, they spent their money stupidly. And I don't think that was their point. I didn't, I don't think they thought it was stupid. It was something that I think had anybody, you know, if it was 50 bucks a ticket, there are many of you morons out there that would have paid 50 bucks to go down there and have that same experience. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you can't just uh, hang it on that. I mean, it's, it's an extravagant trip, not for everyone, but not everything is right. Well, I mean, there are bottles of bourbon that cost up to $1,100 and can be up to like a hundred dollars a shot. You what? Oh, his Chachi. hands broken. It's, oh, is that what it is? Yeah. You, you, so don't, there you are, don't want to. Yeah, someone. Yeah. Someone. Somebody. Well, I'm just saying there are things like that. They're not for everybody. I'm more of a kind of, you know, drinking the beer that's spilled in the ashtray guy. Yeah. Ch yep. Chachi's I'm the six dollars for a ball of ice and uh a hundred dollar yeah. shot of I didn't realize it was six dollars for a bottle of ice. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Six dollars for a ball of ice. Um yeah. anyway, Real fast, but don't here's don't the bash thing, people. Yeah. yeah, and and part of what they're doing, and same thing with Blue Origin, is they're trying to get the cost down so that eventually, years from now, anybody will be able to pay their 50 bucks and go into space, right? There has to be pioneers that do this. We're lucky enough that these folks are paying the money now. Right, and they're right. doing what they can to, to elicit. I mean, it's sad. It is tragic. But here's where the question comes to us, right? And this is interesting. There were, let, let me go to the news story here. On Tuesday, the 20th of June, buoys detected tapping, metallic banging sounds coming from the search area, raising slim hopes at that time that survivors might yet be found. We don't know the source of that noise, but we've shared that information with Navy experts to classify it. That's what U.S. Coast Guard Rear Admiral John Mauger told CBS this morning. The sound was detected at 2 a.m. local time by a Canadian P-3 aircraft. It first came every 30 minutes and was heard again four hours later. The internal government memo obtained by CNN states. The noises were picked up again Wednesday, the 21st of June. Officials admitted that the noises were inconclusive and were being analyzed by Navy experts as the search and rescue operation was still in full swing. With respect to the noises specifically, we don't know what they were. And to be frank with you, Captain Jamie Frederick of the 1st Coast Guard District told reporters on Wednesday, they have no answers. And I've had so many people write to me saying, Dave, do you think there is a chance that this was paranormal, that the spirits of the five men that were lost were somehow trying to direct the attention of the searchers to a specified location? It's interesting that it happened every 30 minutes for like a, a span of a few hours, then stopped and then started up again in intervals. That's an intriguing aspect of this, you know, not just like a piece that might've been after the implosion banging up against something you would have thought that as the waves went, it would continually cause that noise, but it, it did it. It, it, it had hit it, bang, 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 and then a half an hour later, bang, 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 and a half an hour later, bang. So it is interesting that there seemed to be an intelligence to this. Mm -hmm. Well, it's hard to say, though, right? And Marty, maybe you can attest to this or talk about it, but they, they say that underwater noises carry in such unique and strange ways and over miles that they may have been hearing it Ha happen there, but it's something that was do you know taking place miles away. I don't know. It's very strange that, it, that they were hearing it above the crash site. Yeah, well, you know, I was reading also earlier today that they actually believe that one of the agencies involved in the recovery had mm -hmm. uh, had obtained some type of of uh, sound wave when the actual they believe when the actual implosion occurred. Mm -hmm. So maybe by taking that time hack and saying, okay, well, this is when we think it occurred, and listening to all the other uh, sounds that they did here, they might be able to say, yeah, there was like a, you know, half an a echo day effect. echo yeah. effect, yeah. So who knows? I mean, I'm not an expert in that area, but, but knowing that they have the capability to get that type of... Uh, uh, sound wave from the implosion. Hold on a second. I'm looking clearly at your resume and it says expert in sound detection underwater. Are you... Um, that was an old resume, Dave. And I think I made a correction to that before you hired me. <laughs> he accidentally so... put that on the resume. 
Yeah. Oh, actually, wait, you're right. Nope. I do have the other resume here. It oh. says, uh, please scratch that out. Also known as a professional male dancer. Sorry. I do have yeah, the up That's when I, on scra- well. I put pen. I made the pen yeah. correction on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. 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 That is, but, uh, that's strange. What do you guys think of that though? The concept that maybe it was the spirit or let's take it back even further. What if it was the spirits of Titanic? Boom, 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 alerting them of this new tragedy. You know, if the concept is that that implosion happened in a a nanosecond, they were vaporized, essentially. Um, They probably had no idea it was coming or simply not at that speed. Could their souls be confused and, you know, wandering? It's it's very strange. Um, The whole concept of underwater haunted objects but why not we think water has a big thing to do with hauntings it would just seem that in the ocean that it would have such a a different impact to that so dave did you see though they originally thought they were vaporized to your point and then a story i think i read yesterday or today was they've actually found pieces of human flesh oh is that i all i've heard is that they found human remains but they weren't specific to that now um when uh, I don't want to get too graphic on this, but um, the things I've read and understand is with the way it happened, there would the human element would be reduced to a sludge or a slime. Ah, okay. So there may be, you know, that. I don't know that they've said they've like found an ear or a nose or an arm or something, but they may have found gelatinous. Uh, I try not to read the full effect. story. I think it's better. Yeah, to I've noticed that pieces. week yeah. after week. <laughs> I live the rest. The first two sentences and the last two. That's really all you yeah, need there. Really? Chachi. Yeah. In the beginning, the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So could it be that the spirits were reaching out, trying to be heard? Very well could be. It's it's all subjective. Um, interesting. It, it'll, you know, there was one article I read that came out saying that uh, they think that this uh, sub came upon uh, a USO, uh, unidentified submersible object, these underwater UFOs, if you will, and that it is what vaporized the ship. But obviously they can tell from the damage that it was an implosion. And when you hear from all the experts saying that the uh, titanium and uh, fabricated alloy that they used was not conducive, and even the owner had talked about that and knowing that he was cheating a few things to get it done. Oh, just tragic. Either way you look at it, just yeah. tragic. You know, so. and I, I was looking at the their site, you know, they're still advertising for that as well. So did they, they have more than one submersible? Yeah, I think they, they do. Yeah. Okay. Yikes. Yeah, that's gotta that's I'm, gotta be hard business to come back up with. Yeah. They were hiring as of the Friday before the tragedy for a new sub pilot. They were looking for somebody to do the piloting of it. Mm-hmm. I think I'll take my money and spend it on bourbon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One hundred dollar a shot bourbon <laughs> sounds a lot better. Holy yeah. Christmas. Well, I'll vaporize the bourbon. Prayers, our go. thoughts and prayers from the Paranormal 60 go out to all of the families involved yeah, in this tragedy. Definitely. Uh, the people and companies and organizations that this is a, a horrible tragedy, and uh, please, folks, I know we all go for the quick laugh on social media, but let's also show some kind of decorum and couth and just realize that, you know, whether you agree with or align with people's politics or sexuality, or there's a tragic end of life here, and that's what should be focused on, not jokes about their status. You know what What hit me the hardest about all that story was the 19-year-old boy. I don't know if you read that story, and again... Yeah. I breezed over it, but essentially the, the the tagline was his dad wanted him to go. He didn't want to go. He had a huge fear of it, but he wanted to make his dad happy and proud of him. You know, like, For wow, Father's he, Day. He, right, right. He, he gave his life up just because he wanted to make his dad happy. He also yeah. brought a Rubik's Cube, and he was he, supposed to do a Rubik's Cube under, um, yeah. <laughs> under the sea, like the lowest point in the sea to, to say, I've solved Rubik's Cube in this short amount of time. Uh, for a, a Guinness Book of World Re- Records uh, deal, and that uh, just everything about it is sad. No, that gives me an idea. Yeah. Shouldn't we try to break some sort of Guinness World Record on this show? I think, I think we, we have. Should. Oh, How quickly yeah. can four grown men destroy their livers and brains? <laughs> so yeah. far, we're a, a year and a half into it, and it's it seems to be taking uh, taking its toll. It's getting harder every week to read these things. Yeah, 
Well, uh, thank you all for everybody that is here this evening, spending some time with us. We'll move on from that. But I did want to address that because so many people were bringing up the paranormal element. And I also brought up the USO. I can't answer to that. I mean, it was on more of a definitely a fringe out there website uh, that released the press release. And I'm even reticent to call it that. But uh, it's it's tragic. Uh, let's uh, remind people, please rate and review this program. Wherever you listen to it, it really goes a long way to help me and the team. If you could take a moment to rate and review, just give us five stars, even if it's just love the show. By saying that, doing that, especially on things like um, uh, Amazon Music, on on uh, uh, Stitcher, on I can't even think of all. There's so many, and and we're on. Uh, iTunes, uh, Apple podcasts. Every time you do that, it helps show us to more and more people and it, it makes our visibility grow. And that is what I'm trying to do again. You know, kind of having done this for 18 years, uh, 16 of those, uh, with darkness radio and kind of rebooting a year and a half ago, we're starting from scratch. You know, there's like 10,000, uh, comments from the old show, darkness radio on, on, uh, Apple podcasts, there's about 350 for our show and it's a great start. I'm not poo-pooing that at all. I want to thank the people that have taken the time to do that. But if you could just spend a few seconds, whoever you are across the world or in the universe listening to us, if you have access to rate and review, please consider doing that. It does mean a lot. Yes, Chachi, you had a point? I, yes. I always try to make, you know, invalid points. And the one I have for you thank tonight you. <laughs> is, yeah. I don't know it if helps. you heard. They're actually shutting down Stitcher. Yes. As of August of this year, I, believe so. I think it's August 29th, Stitcher will be gone. Yep. Uh, one of our former homes when I was on Beyond the Darkness, uh, it will be gone now. But, you know, there are so many other great formats out there. I believe it's going to be absorbed into Pandora. Uh, wow. So, yeah, look, uh, find us. And for those of you watching the show, what really helps if you're watching it live or watching it after the fact is hit that like button. And for those of you that may not understand, you think you've subscribed. When you hit the bell, they actually give you a couple options that you're subscribed. You can choose how often you want to be uh, reminded of content. Please make sure that you subscribe fully so that you're alerted to all the new content that we put on this program. I Let's always get to select, a couple I would of like emails. updates every five minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's sure. why. Definitely. Make I know sure it's you irritating that everything. Marty and I have to keep texting you every five <laughs> yeah, minutes exactly. updates in our lives. It. We do have a couple of emails here I want to get to. Um, and if well, you have Greg? questions, no, yeah, Greg that's why emails. I'm doing it. Oh. I think you guys are the most cheerful when we get the emails. So let's take <laughs> we love care them. of them here. We love them. Uh, send them to me, Dave at paranormal60.com. If you have a story, your own paranormal experience, whether it's scary or funny, angelic, demonic, Ouija board, They're we want to hear your tales. Yeah. They're if you've great. seen strange creatures like we're going to talk about in tonight's program, we want to hear about it. All right. Hi, guys. I know you're a busy man, and I appreciate your time. I do have a question for you. How do you reconcile your spiritual belief system with what you have experienced with the paranormal? I'm having issues with that. I'm honestly not sure what to believe anymore. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Jim. And Jim, I'm, I'm using your letter as a template because I have been asked this question thousands of times over the years I've been doing this because I talk about being religious and spiritual in nature. And many people do come to me and say, well, you know, I feel like, oh, the Bible's told me it's bad and this and that and the other. Listen, I firmly believe in my realm that when we're to believe and have faith, you have to, faith has to be tested for it to be good. Um, and it's okay to question things. And I think there are a lot of questions. Listen, read the Bible, folks. For any of you saying, oh, this is all evil, it's ingratiated throughout the entire Bible. There's giants, there's unicorns, there's ghosts, there's people rising from the dead, there's the deaf and blind being able to see again. There are ghosts, there are witches, there are psychics. There are many different stories and tales being told. So please... Don't just jump to the assumption that it's evil. Uh, a lot of the word has been manipulated because really what money churches want is they don't want you going outside of yourself to get answers. They want you going to a church. And I'm not bashing churches by any means, but they want you to rely on them for the answers. So I reconcile it with, I do my best to do good and to try to help spirits out as I would help anybody in the living out. 
I do my best to answer those questions and give voice to the lost souls. And I pray for them. And I ask people around the world to pray with us. And we do prayer and healing requests. And we do things that are of that light and of that ilk. Um, if it, Here's my biggest suggestion. If you really feel that it's something that's messing with your belief system, then don't do it. It's just that simple. If you feel that it is something that makes you uncomfortable, don't do it, right? But as uh, Cheryl Crow says, if it makes you happy, how can it be that bad, right? And we're I talking honestly, about paranormal stuff right now? Yeah, yes, okay, we are. So make sure I yeah. didn't know what you're So doing. going into the paranormal, um, there's a lot of questions. And there are things I have a hard time reconciling. And it's put me on places where I ask questions and I seek answers. And it's funny because I've, ask religious leaders. And many of them have given me answers off the record because they're like, listen, Dave, I want to help you with this. And this is what I believe, but they're not willing to say that to their church or their congregation, which I think is sad. And there are many churches that are ill-equipped to help when it comes to aspects of the paranormal and the supernatural. So I don't besmirch them that. They weren't trained for that. They were trained to go out and read Bible verses and try to tell you how to make your life better by believing and, and having these things uh, and these belief systems. Um, and then when it comes down to the nitty gritty and the dark stuff, there are good men out there and women that are doing the job of God and, and trying to um, bring answers to people and clear houses and do blessings. Uh, so... I just, I've just rectified it in my own heart by coming to terms with the things that I'm doing and trying to bring good to each one of those situations and trying to answer. And that's why you hear me very open about all aspects of my life on the show, my depression, my anxiety. I share all of these things because I believe I was in these situations and allowed to live as long as I've lived so that maybe I can help other people see that sometimes in the bleakest moments, sometimes in the moments when you're questioning and challenging your own belief systems, it's okay to put yourself in that place because um, I've made it through. You can make it through. And hopefully that resonates with people that listen to this show. Um, it, like I said, and if it's not for you, just step away from it. There's no harm in stepping away from something that you feel uncomfortable doing. Dave, can I share right? a personal story? I, I'd love that. <laughs> Let me start off real quickly by saying thank you to Nancy Hayes. Hey, uh, Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Thanks to the P60. We Is love you the guys. the P60 Mafia? Is that who Yeah, you hashtag P60 right. Mafia. Like it. Shout all right, Chachi. Dog. Thrill me with your story. No, I, all honesty, right? So you talk about getting your information. I have a great mm -hmm. story. I was 14 years old, and I was going to church, and mm -hmm. a pastor wanted us to listen to, um, I guess you call it Christian rock. And somebody asked him, can we also listen to Ozzy Osbourne? And he said, of course, you should never get your information always from one place. And right. I was like, wow, for a pastor to say that? That's pretty advanced there. Well, and then what did we learn earlier this year, Chachi, when you read one of the stories? Oh, it was the fact that that uh, Ozzy and Black Sabbath, they weren't embracing the dark side. They weren't. They were, they were actually doing it kind of. Yeah, as a way to, to block protect it. themselves, right? Yeah. And Ozzy owns the whole. I'm the prince of darkness, but they understand what they were doing, right? And you hear that there wasn't was Wasp, I think, a Christian band. Striper, I know, was. Yeah. Um, is. Yeah. Striper and still and is. Uh, uh, gosh, uh, uh, Shane Pittman's band. Uh, they do the song "Monster." Bon Jovi. Um, no. No, I'm trying no. to remember the name of the band now. Uh, who does the song Monster? That's also a Christian. Oh, R.E.M.? No, no, you're incorrect. So one of our lovely listeners will come up with that answer. <gasps> you're going to make Until then, let's, let's acknowledge Richard. Richard, Richard look forward to wow. a night with the boys each week. Awesome. Thanks for taking time with us. Thank you, Richard. Another beautiful donation. I can't tell you guys how much that means as well. Thank you. Um, you know, Dave didn't heck? pour any uh, butter skillet. Schnapps skillet. Or Look at everybody's skillet? coming at me. Skillet. 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 That's skillet. right. I've yeah. never heard of Skillet. Oh, you skillet. have. If you have... listen to Monster, check. Yeah, during the break, look up Skillet and Monster. You'll recognize the song. Um, they've got some other great songs. Plus, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, take a look at, at Shane Pittman from The Holzer Files and 28 Days Haunted, and then look up John Cooper, the lead singer of Skillet. Mm. It's un. Never seen in the same place at the same time. 
never, yeah. never seen them. Actually, Shane claims to have met John Cooper at some point. I think when he was looking in the mirror, maybe. Yeah. All right. <laughs> let me uh, let me do this. I want to get to this. This next email is a little lengthy, but I want to make sure that we get a chance to answer it. All right. <clears throat> so here we go. Hi, guys. I'm totally hooked to the Paranormal 60. I also follow your TV work from here in Liverpool, England. Whoa. Wow. All of the Beatles. That's right. I am going to be in England later this year at the Festival of the Unexplained. That and you, you can look up information at festivaloftheunexplained.com. Come on out, meet me, see me there. Okay. This is just one of the things that happened to me throughout my life that has left me wondering if ghosts are just attracted to me. Through my life, I had a number of experiences with the paranormal. Some of them have been full-blown, no doubt whatsoever. What just happened absolutely was paranormal, and not just me. Others have been more out-of-the-jute variety. I don't know what out-of-the-jute means. Is that a uh, English term? We have some English it, fans in the chat. It yeah, is. You know, if, if only one guy was here who could answer that for us, Greg Lawson. Oh, he's in our uh -oh. chat room. <laughs> Greg with a donation for the cause. Thank you, brother. All right. He wouldn't uh, give really, the full 20, though. No, Notice wouldn't that. go to 20. 1990. Well, yeah, Lynn's yeah. paying attention. She's like, Greg, 1999. Said, you know our limit on 20, our cards. No. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Greg. Um, the jute. All right. Anyway, there is always that moment right after something happens when you doubt your own mind. However, this experience left me wondering whether there actually is another dimension or perhaps evil entities. I really needed to know I was not going crazy. I haven't used my daughter's real name in this account, so we'll just call her Nell. Hmm. We had already had quite a number of strange occurrences in the house at Lark Hill at the time this happened. However, this was the first time I actually saw something. Nell was around six or seven at the time. We had just decorated her bedroom pink and white with a lovely sleeper loft bed, the kind with seating and a place for a television underneath and a ladder that went up to the top of the bed. She was dancing intensively at the time and had been told she had to grow her fringe out so that she could keep it all in a neat bun on top for ballet lessons. For those of you Americans, fringe is bangs. Ah, uh, yeah. I got that, the mm. second part of it. Her, her bedroom also sounds like Greg's. It, it, it does. It does, it's kind of. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. Now that you mentioned it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now let's see. Uh, all right, where does this go? So each night, we would put her hair in a bun using a bun net and hair grips. I use those every night. And pin her growing fringe back with hair clips. We did the same thing this particular night. She put on her pink pajamas, brushed her teeth, then... She climbed her ladder. I tucked her in and kissed her goodnight, leaving her nightlight on. She was usually so tired when her head hit the pillow, she would pass out and sleep all night long. I left the bedroom, quietly closing the door behind me, and went downstairs to the lounge to watch a film with my partner. When the film had finished, we did our usual pre-bedtime routine and crept quietly upstairs to bed. My partner and I had been asleep for a while when I woke up needing to go to the bathroom. I looked at the clock. It was just after 3 a.m. And so as I didn't want to wake anyone up, I, I laid there for ages thinking, just go back to sleep. You can hold it till morning. But eventually I had to get up. I got out of bed, walked around to the other side where my partner slept right next to the door. We always closed our bedroom door over at night. But as I turned the bottom corner of the bed, I noticed that the bedroom door was wide open. And I saw Nell standing at my partner's bedside with her arms by her side, head down, just staring at him. Same pink pajamas, put her, uh, but her hair had been pulled out of the neat bun and was all around her face, completely obscuring her features. She wasn't moving at all. My partner, sleeping soundly, hadn't yet noticed her. My first thought was, oh, she's probably sleepwalking even though she had never done that before. Or maybe she needed water, or maybe she wasn't feeling well. Her head was bent down, chin on chest, and she looked quite literally like she'd been dragged backwards through a hedge. She had somehow taken her bun net, hair grips, and bobble all apart while asleep. I looked at her again and whispered her name. She still wasn't moving, not just standing still, but almost as though she was frozen in place. 
I had always been told never to wake someone who was sleepwalking. And as it was so late, my reaction was to get her back to bed as quickly as possible as she had to be up for school. I walked around behind her and reached out my hands to place on her shoulders and turn her around. Then immediately my bladder kicked in again and I couldn't wait for the toilet. So I just said to myself, just go quickly pee. Then you can guide her back to bed. Staring at the back of her head, she didn't look as though she was ready to move at all, and I knew I would see her if she came back out of the bedroom as I would see her from the bathroom. I ran along the short landing between my bedroom and the bathroom and practically jumped onto the toilet, not shutting the bathroom door to make sure I could see her. As I looked up, I noticed something strange. Nell's bedroom door was exactly opposite the bathroom door. From where I was sitting, I could see that her bedroom door was shut. In my head, I was just saying to myself, how weird that she'd sleepwalk and remember to turn around and close her door. It wasn't until I got back to my bedroom that things became even stranger. Mm. Upon walking into the bedroom, I noticed that Nell was gone. I looked my side of the bed, expecting that she had climbed in and gone to sleep, but she wasn't there. So I shook my partner awake and asked him where she was. He was not responding, so I shook him again and said in a more stern tone, Where is she? He looked at me bleary-eyed and asked, Who? What are you talking about? Again, I asked where Nell was, and his reply surprised me. She's not here, he snapped. I began to get annoyed. She was standing right here at the side of the bed looking at you. My partner rubbed his eyes and then put out that I'd been, uh, he was put out that I had woken him and said, she's not here. She wasn't here at all. What are you talking about? She surely would have woken her dad if she needed anything. So where had she gone? I went past her bedroom and her door was still closed. Worried she might've gone downstairs. I checked all the downstairs rooms. There was no sign of Nell. So I decided to go and check her room. I crept quietly up the stairs, gently turned the handle of her door, and slowly opened it. The room was lit with the soft glow of her nightlight. I tiptoed to the ladder, bending or leading to her bed. Each rung let out a little creak. I froze for fear of waking her again, then held my breath and peered over the top of the ladder. I couldn't believe it. There she was, fast asleep in her pink pajamas her hair tied neatly up in a bun, bun net, grips and all, just as it was when she went to bed. I gasped. I, I quickly placed my hand over my mouth to stifle the noise and almost fell backwards off the ladder. How could that be? Just a few minutes ago, she was standing in my bedroom looking completely unkempt. She was too young to put her own hair back in a bun. All her clips were downstairs. It just didn't make any sense. I crept back down the ladder and out of her room, making sure the door this time was firmly closed. Back on the landing, I tried my best to logically explain what had just happened. I saw Nell standing at the bedside and walked past her to go to the bathroom. Nobody passed me on the way to the bathroom, and while sitting on the toilet with the door open, nobody had entered Nell's room. I had a clear view of Nell's closed bedroom door the entire time. On my way back to bed, no one passed me, yet she had vanished when I walked into my bedroom. She would have had to pass me. There was no other way she could have gotten back to her room. I was shaking with fright. My brain was doing literal cartwheels, trying to think of a way this could have happened. In the end, with no suitable logical explanation, I had to accept that it was not Nell I saw, but something that tried to look exactly like her, with one difference the hair. I decided not to wake my partner to tell him my strange tale. Instead, I climbed back into bed, shaking, and pressed my back right up against him, pulling the bed sheets up around my face and spent the rest of the night staring around the room looking for the little girl. Why was she staring at my partner? Why didn't she let me see her face? And most of all, where had she gone? Was she really a little girl or something more malevolent? I waited and waited, but she did not come back that night. 
A few weeks later, my partner came into the bedroom in the early hours of the morning and shook me awake with a look of sheer bewilderment on his face. He said, you won't believe what's happened to me. Turning over, I said, where have you been? I asked. Downstairs to get a bottle of water. Is Nell awake? Has she been in here? Immediately, my stomach sank and a feeling of dread came over me. I knew what he was going to say, that he had just seen the girl. He continued, all of the lights were off as I went through the hall to the kitchen. All of the doors to the downstairs rooms were open. There was no sign of Nell. I grabbed a bottle of water from the cupboard and left the kitchen. As I walked through the hall, I saw Nell in her pajamas coming around the corner of the staircase. I thought it was strange that I hadn't actually heard her come down. No footsteps. Her hair was all over her face and she pirouetted across the hall, right past me so fast and into the kitchen. I called her name, but... She didn't reply. I couldn't see her face. Scared she might hurt herself if she was sleepwalking, I, I followed her into the kitchen. There was nobody there looking around. I felt my heart jump into my throat and started to wonder what the hell I'd just seen. Where had she gone? She didn't go past me, back through the hall. I ran back through the hall and up the stairs, two at a time. I stood in front of Nell's bedroom door, my mind replaying what had just happened, turning the door handle and going into her room. She suddenly sat bolt upright in her bed, hair firmly in her usual bun. What do you want, Daddy? It's still dark. Trying my best to swallow my fear, I tucked her back in and quietly left. Since then, there have been many things that happened in this house. About a year later, I was telling somebody about what happened that night, and she suggested I try to talk to it. I was so scared, but... After a while, I downloaded an app which would show the words spoken by a spirit in response to a question. I asked, did you live here? The spirit answered, farm. I asked, what happened to you? The spirit answered, murder. Then without a question, the spirit said, shovel. A list of three Christian names came up, one female, two male. I panicked. I deleted the app and tried not to think about it anymore. However, every now and again, it would creep back into my subconscious. So about eight months later, I decided to look at old maps of the area just to see what was there historically. Scanning the map, my mouth fell open. There was a large home on the land, which a wealthy family had built behind the main house, right where my home was now. You guessed it. There was a large farm. Hmm. Was the little girl trying to tell me something? Was it even actually a little girl? Were the messages even related to her or different spirits I had picked up? Things happened so often in this house that it started to be accepted as just normal. But the little girl was a shared experience, a validated experience. Even though the experiences happened at different times, the girl looked exactly like my daughter with one big difference, her hair hiding her face. You never really felt alone in the house, but not in a creepy way. A, a medium later told me that I was very sensitive to the dead around me and that the little girl I had seen had played an antique clock in my house that was always showing the wrong time by a few minutes. I did own one antique 30s bake-like clock then, and it was never right, even though I kept fixing the time. She then told me that that little girl was looking for a mummy. Mom, in English. Hmm. Is that why she showed herself as my daughter? At that point, we decided to look to move out. I do not know who's in that house now, but I hope they're ready to question their own sanity. I'm a regular listener of your podcast, but have never felt too comfortable telling the story. As I have gotten older, I'm reading more on the subject of the paranormal and listening to the stories you tell. I've decided it was time to send it to someone I trust to tell it to without judgment. Thank you for allowing me to get the story into the open. My other experiences have included a shadow person, a poltergeist, ghosts, and other supernatural happenings. At one point, my own mother jokingly called me a witch. Kindest regards, Lindsay. Mm. Well, that's a lot to unpack, Lindsay, but let's try real quickly before our first break. Um, here's what I would say. Because nothing evil, nothing malevolent, nothing negative actually happened. There were no threats. There no, were, were no strange voices. I would be more compelled to believe, especially because of the silence of it, that your daughter was in fact sleepwalking in an astral form. That what you were seeing was an astral projection of your daughter out of her body 
spiritually walking around and maybe her hair didn't have the confines of that because maybe she's more comfortable with it not pulled up in a tight bun i've got to guess when i used to have hair pulling it back doing things you could get headaches from that nonsense right i never had the man bun chachi i know you sported one of those in college but uh two twice yeah that can give you quite a headache yeah um yeah, it was but i i i got nothing i i would say that that would be my first belief is that you're dealing with uh probably an astral projection of your daughter nothing more nothing less nothing evil nothing malevolent but again that's just with this one snapshot of a story you said you've got so much more to share um i feel like it would have happened a lot more if it was something truly malevolent or evil and i think your daughter would have experienced it too so that's where I stand on this. If you have stories, if you have questions, if you've got your own experiences, email me, Dave, at Paranormal60.com. That's Dave at Paranormal60.com. Mark G., good to see you back, sir. Thank you very much for being All here right. with us. We appreciate that. A couple yes, things Jackie. to note. Just a couple okay. things to note, if you don't mind. All right. Again. So note, first, note away. All right. First off, mm-hmm. Dave is an incredible mm-hmm. storyteller. Thank so, you. That he is. That he is. If you have a story... And you want it to be told in the best possible way, send it to this man right here. I, I didn't get a chance to look, but I'm sure it's been all about your, your storytelling. Your voice is perfect. If you have a book you. and you'd like someone to read your audio book, maybe there on the show go. when Greg gets back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I should, I should Second, read Greg's book. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? Just one night. Oh, he's listening. Too bad. If he wasn't listening, how great would it be? You just open We have a reader email and you start reading from his book. That would be great. Um, third and most important, mm-hmm. I went through a bottle and a half of bourbon during, during that story. That was the longest story, but it was so well written. It oh, yeah. Agreed. Me. That's the thing. Some right. stories are boring as hell. That one was not. I was like, oh, keep telling right. me. Keep telling me. So I'm yeah. sorry. Who was the person that, that wrote it? Uh, Lindsay. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. So please, I if you have a story, send it the story in. out of reach. Yeah. It'll, it'll bug you know, Greg. It'll make us happy. Send the story in. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, on, on top of that there, uh, Chachi, is that usually when the stories are that long, Dave has 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 a challenge having to read some of the grammar that's that's written in some of these that was longer so ones. Well written. It was so well written. He never yeah. never had to backtrack or anything like that. There so. were a couple of baubles only because again. You're COVID drunk. mind, I'm t- uh, no, I haven't had a drink. Well, they call it COVID I, I fog, right? Yeah, I don't thing. have that. There you so go. that was it. And and guys, not that I want to brag, but that was the first time I've read the story. I hadn't read it over earlier. Wow. I printed wow, that it out. Was impressive. Just like my stories for tonight. Perfect. Yeah, wow. there's just a little difference, Greg. <laughs> Greg, you're watching. Oh, did you send my stories yet? Yeah, yes. he's gonna be like, oh, see, I don't need to read. Dave read the whole thing perfectly. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do this. We're gonna take a quick break we will come back we've got more to share we've got a lot of cool stories on tap uh, a lot of interesting things that i want to make sure we can cover i do want to mention again i am going to be at the uss north carolina in wilmington north carolina this saturday for the get haunted event i'll be doing a meet and greet there and we will be doing a ghost hunt Um, there are vip tickets still available you can find more information by going to darkness events.com. So if you're just finding out about it, come on out, see me this Saturday, July 1st, 2023. So for those of you time travelers, if you're listening from the future, set your dials, come back to July 1st, 2023, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see you and get together. A little bit later on this month, I'll be back in Raleigh, North Carolina at GalaxyCon. I would love to see you at GalaxyCon. It's going to be an amazing time. Dave Foley's going to be there. We're going to try to sit down and break bread and talk UFOs and have a good time. But there are so many amazing guests. Go check out GalaxyCon.com. Check out all of the fantastic guests coming to Raleigh, North Carolina. I will be just a small portion of that event, and I can't wait to see you all. We will be back. But first, let's hear from our sponsors. Innovation, creation, vitality, and joy are the pulse of MySoulTopia.com. With many custom creations for the mind, body, and spirit, along with classes, intuitive sessions, coaching, and healing energies. 
MySoultopia.com strives to bring sophistication with a twist to the metaphysical and the holistic market while raising the community's vibration and channeling the new paradigm, which means new and exciting adventures for all. MySoultopia.com is utopia for your soul. Visit MySoultopia.com, your one-stop shop for all your metaphysical needs. Offering hand-selected crystals and crystal jewelry with prices to fit every budget. MySoultopia.com offers the best selections of tarot and divination cards by top designers. Expertly curated and award-winning book collections from top authors on every subject you'll need on your spiritual journey. My Soultopia is also proud to offer the finest singing bowls and an eclectic collection of the most amazing gemstones, crystals, and crystal jewelry from the top metaphysical designers in the world. MySoultopia.com is always your one-stop shop for award-winning mixes of Florida water, sage spray, and other spiritual protection. So begin your journey with the best resource, MySoultopia.com. That's MySoultopia.com. Why mess with the rest when you can start with the best? MySoultopia.com. Again, that's M Y S O U L T O P I A.com. Haunted Magazine is a publication dedicated to all things paranormal and spooky. Each issue features articles, interviews, and stories about ghosts, hauntings, and other unexplained phenomena. The magazine also covers topics such as cryptozoology, UFOs, and other aspects of the supernatural. Expect to find in-depth investigations of haunted locations, first-hand accounts of ghostly encounters, and reports of paranormal events and attractions. The magazine also includes features on the latest ghost hunting technology and techniques, as well as tips for those looking to search the supernatural on their own. Issue 37, The Frights of Spring, will be in stores from March 6. So remember, don't be normal. Be paranormal, and order your copy, today. Hello, welcome back to the program. I'm your host, Dave Schrader. That's the Colonel, and this cute fella, well, that's Chachi, and Greg is off for the night. Although he could be in our chat room, I don't understand. Maybe it's just he is doesn't he have a there? good enough connection. I don't know. Perhaps he is. If you're still in the chat room, say hi to us, Greg. We miss you, buddy. Yeah, where you. are you? <laughs> Got a lot of cool stuff going on. Remember to hit that like button if you're watching the live, or even if you're watching the replay here on YouTube. Greg is still there. He gives us a fine little hi. Welcome, Greg. Thank you for being there. Real fast, uh, if, if I could, Dave, you mm -hmm. asked earlier for stories. I yeah. would love a story about a succubus. Uh, we've had mm -hmm. one. We have? We on have. This, yeah. On this show? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this show. You should tune in sometime. It's a good what one. What night are you guys on? We have a... Uh, yeah. <laughs> what night? Where, usually Monday and Wednesday. I've had okay. the vid. I've had the Rona. This okay, week, man. so I've been a little under the weather. I feel much better now, though. Uh, so many of you guys showing some love, showing some uh, attention to me. So thank you very much for that. But uh, yeah, so okay. here we are. Yeah, we are. we're good to go. Do we have any stories uh, tonight? We're an hour in. We, do we have any stories? We do. We yeah, do. We, we have 48 <laughs> minutes in. Oh, okay. Wow. We uh, Hey, we talked about the sub and the banging of the ghosts. We've yep. answered some emails. We've done some things that Greg would normally not allow us to do. Mm -hmm. So while the mm -hmm. mouse is away, the cats are playing. That's oh, yeah. what I say. Yeah. Play away. Uh, Play yeah. away. <laughs> Hashtag P6 Mafia. We got Hashtag it rolling. Meow. Yeah. Uh, Marty, let's go. You've got a soldier story for us. I do. Yeah. A soldier's experiences with the supernatural. Lately, soldiers have been sharing the haunting tales that have taken place at military bases in Afghanistan. TikTok user Che Jim posted one of many true stories he has heard happening at Observation Point Rock, Helmid Province, Afghanistan in 2009. According to the report, a soldier has been crouching down in the trenches looking for any enemy, enemies when suddenly the soldier heard odd disturbances on his personal radio which sounded like gunfire and yelling in Russian. 
The man picked up his radio, trying to contact the man yelling to determine what was happening. Distracted by a sound coming from the distance, he lifted his binoculars to look around, and that's when he saw something moving out there. At this point, he replaced his binoculars with his weapons and started looking through the thermoscope. And that's when he was shocked to see a man standing out in the distance, a man visibly colder than the environment that was surrounding him. Mm. Just then, the audio on his radio cuts out. Distracted, he checked to see if he had bumped a knob, but everything was in working order. And when he goes back through the scope of his weapon at the man, he is nowhere to be found. Mm. Yep. When British soldiers and U.S. Marines began digging on the grounds to build positions of def defense, they were shocked to find a huge number of human bones buried in the dirt. That is when the locals of the area informed them that the grounds were once used as a mass grave site, and it was also the location where many death deaths from the Afghan-Soviet war occurred in the 1980s. This is just one of the many ghost stories that have been reported by soldiers who have served in that area. It's pretty interesting. You know, and um, depending where he was at, you know, I mean, you can see something for miles and miles to both directions. If, if uh, you know, if he actually had seen something in his thermoscope and he turned around and looked back, probably should have been still visible. But that's pretty interesting. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah. Very weird. I have kind of a follow up story to that. Um, only because, listen, we've all spent a lot of time walking through many different cemeteries and right. We've done that in, in foreign countries. We've done that here in the United States together, guys, we're always examining things, looking at, at interesting stories. And one thing that I think we've all noticed is when we've been at some of these cemeteries, we've noticed money change that have been laid on some of the gravestones. So just out of curiosity, uh, Chachi, what do you think the money on the gravestones represents? I think it is currency. <laughs> Very good. That's good. That is, yeah. Good. All right. I, maybe I, let me be more specific, maybe okay. for the Colonel. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Colonel, why is it that people are laying currency in the form of change on gravestones? Well, historically that was always used to allow the, individual that is deceased to be able to pay his way over to heaven or to wherever that person is trying to get to the ferryman you're paying the ferryman to take them across On the, the boat place. right oh. right that's what i believed however but marty your answer kind of breaks my heart a little bit uh -oh. because i would have thought Ow. better from you marty Ow. all right so if you've ever noticed these kind of coins on a headstone you might be curious as to why well, as it turns out, this is an act of remembrance that's intended to honor individuals who served their country through military service. Mm. So people who visit the deceased service member can leave a coin on the headstone. So when loved ones come to the cemetery, they're aware that others have been there to pay their respects. This moving sentiment can actually make a tremendous impact on the family of a deceased military uh, member, which is why it is such a very special tradition. It's also important to take note of the type of coin on the stone. For instance, different coins hold different meanings. This is pretty cool. And I don't expect you guys to know the answers, but I'm just curious. Uh, Marty, if you see a quarter on a headstone, what do you think that the quarter stands for? Um, oh gosh, I wouldn't know, Dave. I, I okay. wouldn't even be able to guess. Venture a guess. Come on. Give well, how about, um, Chachi, let me, let me go with you, Chachi. How about let's start small. If you notice a penny on a gravestone, what do you think that that signifies dealing with this military remembrance? I would think that they were a one-star general. One-star mm. general. That's mm. interesting. No, this signifies, right, that a person has visited the headstone. It's an act of gratitude for the person's service. Anybody can leave a penny, whether they're a family member, friend, or fellow service person. Now, if there's a nickel on the gravestone, this means that the visitor who left went to boot camp with the person buried there. Hmm. Now, if you see a dime on the gravestone, that signifies that the visitor served with the deceased military member. Now, seeing a quarter. Oh, hold on. let me a, guess. Let me guess. Okay. It has a, a really heavy association. So what do you think it means? So if you think about how they went from the penny onto the quarter, no, I'm sorry, nickel, dime. Nickel, right. 
I've got to assume, and the 25 cent piece is really the highest piece of coinage we carry mm -hmm. in our pocket. It means that the person who visited was there when the person died. You are correct. Well wow. played, Shachi. If you notice a quarter, this signifies that a previous visitor was present when the soldier passed away. Now that you yeah. understand what each coin means when you see it, you'll have a better idea of what it means when you see this emotional item left behind at a gravestone. And more importantly, you'll know the proper way to leave a coin. So if you are just there paying homage to them, just leave a penny. If you were there with them in boot camp, leave a dime. If you were there and served with them in the military, uh, no, nickel, nickel, then dime if you served. And if you were there at the time of uh, the death of that soldier, you leave a quarter. So I just thought that was yeah, an interesting cool. piece of history. Cool Where'd stories. Where'd you get that? That's a pretty interesting. So I made it up. At, I made it up. At the end well, of Saving no. Private Ryan, yes, he should have left a quarter because he was there at that headstone when that person passed away. Yeah. I get right. it. And I don't know. I... I Leaving rocks has an importance as well, but I don't know what the rock means. Huh. You so. don't know what the rock's been cooking? I can't wow. smell what no. the rock's been cooking, That's but I got the sorry. rock's I don't know. eyebrow going. Yeah. <laughs> yes, All right. Chachi, look no. at you. Is there ever a week that goes by that some kind of rock and roll story doesn't seem to make itself known in the paranormal? He's a rock and roll reporter. Let's just call him that from now on. Yeah. I, I can't tell yeah. you how many times I get a text and say, hey, are you available or are you at a concert tonight? I got one literally an hour ago. And <laughs> this story, I was so excited to see it because I think one of the greatest rock bands. Hey, by the way, uh, by the way. Hashtag rock and roll reporter should be your shirt next week. I'm I think so. I tenor. think so. I mean, I've got like a 60 inch chest, but I don't know if that would fit across there. Rock and roll reporter. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I like Logan. The, rock the rock, rock and roll. And chachi. Rocket yeah. chachi, rock and yeah. chachi reporter. Oh, all right. Throw them up there. Give me some ideas, folks. We come on. We're yeah. an hour in and we don't have any good hashtags for next week. All well, right. This story, I, I printed it off. It's 72 pages long. Excellent. Um, Let me. Let me just I'm going to position <laughs> uh, above your pants, getting some popcorn. No, yeah. I, I'm going to paraphrase it. Um, okay. Sad story because it's about Motley right. Crue. There you go. Oh. There's, there's our guys. Um, Mick Mars, who I believe is on the far right of this photo, mm -hmm. a yeah. Motley Crue recalls seeing aliens and cat people. And wow. I mm -hmm. want to say, I've read this story. They were not on tour with Kiss. How was that? For oh, kids, well, that, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Space Ace. The worst and, uh, part Catman. about this story. Yeah. The worst okay. part about this story is Do the tell. very first word. What is it? It says former Motley Crue guitarist Mick oh. Mars. Oh, interesting. That just bites. Interesting. It was reflecting on a difficult period he faced in the early 2000s while the band was on a hiatus. Mick Mars, who left the rock group in 2022, just last year opened up to Rolling Stone magazine about hitting rock bottom shortly after the September 11th terror attacks as the band took a break and he retreated deep into his Malibu home. Right away, the rock stars have to retreat deep into their Malibu home. I feel for him. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was at this tumultuous time he shared that I used to see giant reptile aliens at the end of my bed and little hairy aliens. At night, cat people used to come in the kind my mother used to warn me might come in and steal my breath. Holy bejesus. Mm -hmm. Mars, right. whose real name, and I didn't know this, Mick Mars, great rock and roll name. Real name? Right. Yep. Robert Allen Deal. I probably shouldn't huh. have shared that. Wow. Now, the whole listen, as a rock star and a member of Molly Crew, he admitted he had been drinking excessively and started taking Oxycontin, Vicodin, uh -huh. and something I've never heard of called Lortab. Yeah, I would think you'd start seeing cats at that point. Morris said he did venture, he didn't venture outside often as he wasn't on tour and he wasn't recording. But he mm -hmm. knew it wasn't the drugs, this is a rock star for you, or the alcohol affecting him and influencing what he was seeing. But it did turn out to be something equally terrifying. Ooh. Mm. Get this okay. it was deadly mold in his Ooh. house that had oh. begun spreading. That's the worst Un kind of mold, really. Unbeknownst Deadly. to him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Luckily, I figured out why I was hallucinating. Other people never do and wind up jumping out of windows, he went on to say. Good point. Mm. 
Eventually, Mick moved out of that mold-infested home before the band's 2005 reunion tour and also underwent hip replacement surgery. The Mars is in a better place now. He got married 10 years ago this year. Hmm, Happy anniversary. Place. Congratulations. Okay. He told Rolling Stone that he only expects yeah. to live another seven or eight years. Ooh. Man, I got it. I hope we don't have another, like, what was it, 2018? Mm. When was it? That 2016. All 16. 2016. Oh, yeah. please. Although this year, Chachi, you and I were keeping track for the first four months. There were a lot of musicians that checked out already this year. Oh, please. I hate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rocker's currently locked in a legal battle with Motley Crue as he filed lawsuit in April accusing them of kicking him out of the group in October after he said he could no longer tour due to illness. Yeah, Anybody that, that knows Mick Mars, this guy's had back problems for like 25 years, mm -hmm. and yet he stands up on stage night after night playing his you-know-what off, and they kicked him out of the band. Mm. When the rest of the band wanted to get high as F and mm -hmm. F everything up, this is a family yeah. show, wow. I covered for them, he said. Now they're trying to take my legacy away. My part of Motley Crue, my ownership of the name, the brand. The band has stripped me of any ownership or profits from the band. Oh. Frank Sinatra and Jimi Hendrix legacy goes on forever, and their heirs continue to profit from it. They're trying to take that away from me, and I'm not going to let that happen. That's a shame. I hmm. hate to see it. It's getting ugly, yeah. too. Really, Especially is. when, really, he was still able to continue to play, and uh, Vince Neil. He's not living up to his side of the bargain. He Listen, is. I, I am assuming at some point you're going to have the members of Motley Crue on the show, so I'm not going to badmouth them. Yeah, I want the free tickets. No, to the no, show. Now that not. I know how they're treating uh, Robert Allen Deal, won't happen. Mm. I think I think old uh, Mick Mars missed his opportunity though. With a name like Robert Allen Deal, he should have gone as Raw Deal. That should have been his name. Ooh, yes. R A Deal, Raw Deal. There's still time. There's still time. Yeah. Maybe well, he'll start a new band called Raw Deal. Raw Deal. Yeah. Well, and that's what he's going through. You're welcome, oh. Mr. Mars. Wow, that's sad. Seven. Whew. Yeah, Hopefully seven. next week uh, the rock and roll reporter can bring a happy story wow, to our ears. So judgy, Marty. So judgy. Hey, just, just Marty, a thought. Marty, yeah. Leave the Greg comments at home. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ow. All right. Uh, Martika, you're up. Yes. What have you got for us? Hey, listen, a paranormal investigator <laughs> report. I love when he starts to do so. Hey, listen. <laughs> I have got to get him a shirt that says hashtag hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, That's listen. how he starts. Hey, every... paranormal hey, investigator uh -huh. reports, Dave, that a strange spiritual entity lives in Texas. A 57-year-old really? investigator was driving with a friend on US-77 in Texas and had just passed I-10 on May 27th at approximately 11.30 p.m., when he saw what he would later describe as a one-and-a-half by one-and-a-half foot dark square moving across the road. Yep, there it is. Got a good mm. picture of it, too, right before he uh, freaked yeah. out. <clears throat> we are going to an investigation in Hallettsville, Texas, and as we were driving on the left from where oncoming traffic would be coming from, this was a two-lane highway, mind you, one way each way, which is usually what a two-way highway is, I saw something <laughs> crawling in the road, he told mm -hmm. the singular for TN Society's chief investigator, Tobias Whalen. The word Fortian. is Fortian. singular Fortian. Yeah. Fortian. Fortian. Yeah. yeah. Named after uh, Mr. Fort, and, uh, Charles Fort. Yeah. Yeah. T Tobias. Mm. Tobias. To to Tobias. 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 Whalen. Drink it up, boys. Drink Did it up. He... <laughs> Drink it up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did he just say Tobias? Yes, Tobias. So, good old Tobias <laughs> Wayland. Tobias. Oh, Tobias. Oh, let's drink and have a sip. I can't put that on a shirt because you no, mispronounced no. the proper spelling. Oh, Jesus, oh, Pete. Oh, okay, geez. let's keep let's keep going here. Oh, okay, all right. Mr. Wow, Mr. So. Mr. Tobias, or as we like to refer to him as Tobias Wayland, during a phone interview. <laughs> what was mm -hmm. weird was that it was black, it was dark, and it. The best way to describe it is to picture a square. It was a square, no arms, no legs, but the corners were stretching out to walk. The man described the entity's movement as being similar to the symbiote from the movie Venom in that it stretched and contorted itself to move. 
At the mm. same time as he was seeing the crawling square, the man said his friend saw a round creature on the opposite side of the highway. He said that she described the creature as having a round body and initially thought it was a pig until it mysteriously vanished. She said that she thought it was a pig because of its shape and because it was mm -hmm. walking in the woods off the road, but that it wasn't a pig because it disappeared. As we all know, mm. pigs don't tend to disappear. Uh, right. She said, then as their vehicle passed, a mysterious square entity, and he lost sight of it, the man said he felt suddenly very cold. I felt like it attached to my vehicle, he said. I got real cold. I'm a paranormal investigator. I've been doing <laughs> Yes. That's another good picture. That is that uncanny. <laughs> Unbelievable. Are we sure yeah. that's not the real photo? That is I'm not, I can't be positive. That's why we do have the disclaimer. Probably. But the big probably. entity does seem to be sitting on top of the car. car. That's the reason yeah. it disappeared. It's on top mm -hmm. of the car. I've been doing yeah. this for 14 to 15 years. I've dealt with a lot of stuff. I've felt a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. I've never felt or seen anything like this before. You could feel the cold. I turned to my friend and said, something is here with us. He tried telling the entity that it was not welcome, but he said it was just it just wouldn't leave. This thing, for a lack of better term, latched onto me. After meeting several friends at the site of the investigation, the old Lavaca County Jail, the man was told that he didn't look like himself, and sprinkled with him, sprinkled him with holy water. This did a little to dissuade the entity from attachment. Wow, yeah, he's so sensual with the splash of the holy water. <laughs> Greg well, allows you to use his photo. Yeah, yes. Greg. Thank you, Greg. Oh, mm, Appreciate it. Interesting. His friends then offered to smudge him with sage, which reportedly began to burn a greenish color. <laughs> wow. I'm not sure that's sage. That's a green color right that there. Is, that's a it looks like a sage stick. That's big. That is. But look at all of his friends are willing to stand that is like, not oh, man, he's still possessed. You gotta love that mm -hmm. Sears is in the background. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And it was weird, the man said. At this point, the entity, which the man said he felt between his T-shirt and skin, yeah, okay, uh, but could no longer see, left through his shirt sleeve. I know I sound crazy. What? <laughs> <laughs> picture's, picture's unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. Where are we yeah. get these? Look at him. Oof. I know it sounds crazy, Chilling. but this thing was running around, he said. Yeah. The now invisible entity then attached itself to his friend, whom he reported wow. experienced stomach cramping and back pain, something he said he had also felt when it was attached Ooh. to him. Oh he said God. that the I know, look at that. Yeah. Is he pictures. on the show now? Wow. Yeah. yeah. He said that the entity felt smaller than it had looked in the road when it was attached, and that it almost felt like an air pocket. Hmm. As it moved, you could feel a tail, almost as if it was dragging a tail. He wow. added, "Yeah, exactly." What is that noise? Was that the pig? It's a pig. I was opening the bottle of scotch. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> Concerned for his friend's safety, the man said that he placed his hand on her and commanded the entity to come back to him. A big no-no, right, Dave? That's not what right. you want to do. Well, he's being a hero. Yeah. Don't okay. don't be a hero. Yeah. Don't be a hero. Yeah. It seemed it seemed to do so, and as the night progressed, he said the entity became weaker and weaker until he could no longer feel it. During the course of the investigation, the man said that they were able to use a device to communicate with something which informed them that the entity had been summoned specifically to harm the friend who had experienced the more pronounced reaction to the entity's attachment. So, yeah, um, oh. we've all had we've had those types of experiences. Uh, yeah, I've passed a couple of evil entities this exactly. way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, as you see on the bottom, you can also uh, donate via our Venmo, which is at Paranormal 60 during your reading of the story. It was so good. Uh, one of the listeners sent in. $50 and said, sign me up for the hashtag Hey Listen t shirt. Oh, oh wow. Man, yeah. thank you, whoever that was. Nice yeah, job. that was well done. Hey, started. just in time to make a mention, uh, our good friend has two books out Nikki Folsom, Nikki author Folsom. of The Haunted Harlequin and Conflicted Reality My Paranormal Journey with a foreword 
by Paranormal 60's Dave Schrader. Those books are out and available right now. You can find yeah. more information about them if you go to my Amazon store. Just head on over to uh, the paranormal60.com, click on the shop, scroll down, you'll see our Amazon store, click on it, go into the books, you'll find all of the books that we feature on this program we are big fans of nikki oh, yeah. Folsom oh, as yeah. an author and a legendary uh bartendress who serves many different people on the show mm -hmm. i'd like to take one second i want to introduce you to a new family member uh oh <laughs> what could this possibly be is he gonna show greg ladies and oh, gentlemen greg. archie oh, schrader hey. look at archie yes. this archie. is archie Archie was a little uh, orphaned kitten that our family has decided to love and take on. We are now up to, for those of you keeping score, 11 children, five cats, one dog, one father losing his mind. And a yeah. chachi. Yeah. And, forget a, about and that. a chachi. That's this right. is Archie. Archie, darkness paranormal Archie right here. Look at his soul. Mascot. His pure darkness, evil. That, that is oh. the paranormal 60 mascot. Look at how little he is. There's barely any meat. How am I going to survive on this in bad times? Oh, oh. <laughs> PETA, please yes. don't send an email to us. That's right. Yes. We're just kidding, aren't we, Arch? All right, so there's the Archie. Welcome to the family, Archie. The Archie. You are free, free to roam about. All right, let's get to it. We have more stories to cover. Uh, this is a big one, especially coming off the tale you just told, Marty. I'm anxious to hear this. I'm going to get rid of the tale you just told. And a monster. Fast, yeah. I just, I just want to share. I don't mean to interrupt. I just got a new story right through the fax machine. If I could tell wow. it after you're done, I'll let you read the Through story. the fax machine? It, it's all wow. rolled up in that thermal paper. I've got to pull oh, it out, wow. flat it out. But this is big news. Big news. I'll okay. let you finish. But if anybody's I've... thinking about dropping off, this I know we're going the off the rails. Huh? I know. No, 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 I no. Story. no, 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 no. no. It's a miracle. I, this. There's going to be so many hashtags Off out of this story. The rails. Trust me. Trust me. All right. Well, really? Yeah. That's all right. Me. I'm going to take your word for it. Right, but uh, let's get to this one coming off of what Marty just told us. A monster has been caught on video lurking in an Idaho lake, adding itself to the local legend. As we have come to learn over the past few years, the Loch Ness Monster isn't the only mysterious creature probably lurking in a body of water. Back in March, Mexican police investigated numerous reports of a mysterious lake monster in Atipan de Zaragoza. Is that how you say it, Marty? That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Perfect. I, I called Marty before the show just to oh, my double check. Bad. My bad. Yeah, I wanted to make we sure that I was good. Yeah. Uh, in April, a mysterious serpent-like creature spotted in New Orleans lagoon baffled locals and park officials. And now another lake monster is making its waves near the town of McCall, Idaho. You ready for this? There may be a photograph. I'm not I'm not sure. Let me let me see if I've got one here. I thought I had one. Oh, I do. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. The disclaimer is up. There we are. Uh Wow. There's a new lake monster making waves near the town of McCall, Idaho. This particular creature is nothing new, however. Charlie, the lake monster, as it's called, has been hanging around Payette Lake since the 1920s. According to Barbara Nokes Quader of the Nell Tobias, that's Tobias Research Center. Tobias? Tobias? Not Tobias? Not Tobias, no. Oh. The first documented sighting of something out of the ordinary was by a railroad logging crew in 1920 while cutting railroad ties near the upper end of the lake. Workers thought they saw a huge log floating in the water. Don't they? Don't. <laughs> yeah, the don't log there, began man. to, the log began to integrity. move. Journalistic integrity. I'm trying. The log began to move forward. Then the log began to undulate. Oh my goodness, undulation. And then the log created its own wake as it rapidly left the area. Leave it alone, Dave. Yeah, these Leave guys were alone. flushing it out is what it sounds Leave like. It alone. I could be wrong. What? I'm just saying. Since there uh, have been numerous sightings of the Payette Lake monster, including a group of 20 people back in 1946 who reported it, appearing to be 40 foot long logs. It's like a big log like creature. In the water. Yeah. Fast forward to 2023. That's now for any of you time travelers that have lost your way and looking for a place to find your your footing. This is 
2023. The latest sighting of Charlie the Lake Monster once again has locals and the internet talking. And I know we joke around a lot on this show, but we actually have video footage. Let's take a look. What is that? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I would have shoved that woman in the water oh, so quick. Yeah. I, that would have been the Karen end. Karen was all over it. Yeah, Where's yeah. mom? I don't know. She jumped in. She, the she, sure in. The, she trust me. Pig. She jumped in. I'm going Actually, it was a beaver. Hey, Chachi, didn't you do some That was a big couple? beaver. Well, Dave, Chachi, Chachi, Dave. didn't you go swimming with the pigs at one point? In your life, I did not. I thought I you know, did, my sir. friends that didn't know. No, 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 <laughs> did, sir. no. I, I got to him beforehand. We were on our uh, Jericho cruise yep. a few years back, and you know, we've all gone swimming with the dolphins before. We've all gone swimming with the stingrays and the you know seals and such, and have had just a lovely time. And then uh, Chachi's family got a wild boar up their ass that they wanted to go swim with pigs. I said, pigs are filthy, man. They poop like crazy. Oh, yeah. And it was a nightmare, wasn't it, Chachi? All your it was an absolute nightmare. nightmare. I had my my daughter, her boyfriend, my wife. They talk my Everybody's wife over there. Too. Yep, your wife. wife's all good. I'm like, I'm not all going floating pig. around in huge pig turds. And yeah. I was on the on the beach drinking a nice local brew. Mm. Never got in the water. Mm. I thought you had. Sorry, <laughs> no, my bad. Marty, no, no, no. Come on, Marty. Dave talks that to me. Ch Chachi's not an outdoorsman to begin with when it comes no. to that and stuff. Like, and when, the minute I said you're, you could be in a giant pig toilet, he's like, I'm out. I was out. And uh, yeah, I was like, I think I'll do something else, anything else than go swimming with yeah. pig infested well, hey, waters. There is a theory now that has been foot, is that foot Elvis? Forth, or foot porth. There is a foot porth. <laughs> Yeah, there's a theory that has been foot porf uh, recently that creatures like Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot live in a parallel universe, traveling through portals, thus making them hard to track and capture. Perhaps another one of these portals exists in Payette Lake, in addition to Loch Ness, New Orleans, and Azitpan de Zaragoza. So that's that's what's going on in the world of strange cryptids. I don't know if you guys were familiar with that. Interesting, Dave. What's, what's Thank encrypted? you. Uh, like your next story, Chachi. You've got a tale for us as we head on to the Bonnie Bonnie Loch of Ness. Mm. So, so, Dave, I've, I've been doing this for a while, right? Hundred and yes. how many episodes? Hundred years? Hundred years? Yeah. Too many. We're over hundred. And, and so now, I yeah. pace myself, knowing the show will end at sixty minutes. And that we are now beyond happened, that. But, okay. Mm -hmm. And I have not properly paced myself. No, and so I have two stories, one right. planned, one that just came off the uh, thermal fax machine. Wow! And oh I am not prepared to uh, read them. <laughs> so well, Trotch, you're the guy, Colonel. Talking through this, you are the leader of this. Uh, well, you know, Trotch, I think what you need to do uh, is uh, read them on. both. Read them both. Listen, 
I, I have backed off on reading the comments, but Chig, <laughs> Chig just caught my eye. I peripheral vision. Uh -huh. Look what Chig oh, said. Oh, your anus, please. Yeah. I don't know what hey. that means. Um, it's I, a I'm little afraid forward. to ask. It's a little <laughs> forward. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Uh, Ten thousand listeners. Uh, Logie but, says hashtag paranormal 60 after show. It's starting to feel that way. Mark <laughs> says hashtag who needs a liver anyway. Damn right, Mark. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. Okay. okay, here we go. Dutch, take me to Scotland. Oh, and God, I love Scotland. Boom. Or like he likes to call it Scotchland. Scotchland. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Stunned tourists mm -hmm. spot a huge dark shape they think could be the Loch Ness monster Excellent. a snapshot from scotland is giving new life to an age-old question you know what that question is does the does the loch ness monster, monster exist oh yeah. i'd have to read that part wow. okay dave already no, knew. no you asked the question i thought that's where we were logically sure. it, it was rhetorical and that's dave. been asked no, yeah. it was rhetorical. Oh, okay right. uh the photo comes from a pharmacist in Lyon, france mm -hmm. a fantastic sure it's name. not lion nope nope Lyon. it's with a y not an i okay mm. Sure? Etienne, Etienne Camel says wow. he and his wife took a vacation to Loch Ness. Mm -hmm. The picture he has shows an otherwise rippling lake on a mostly sunny day. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of it, what Kamal mm -hmm. calls a huge dark shape, a long, long shadow. Mm -hmm. He says there was no cloud to cause the dark spot, which yet okay. was 65 feet long. Ooh. Kamal's report makes two mysterious sightings so far this year. An official mm. Loch Ness Monster sightings register actually keeps track of them online. So for those there is the close-up. For Yeah, yep, that is. Ahead. For those Please of you ahead. just listening, you're missing. That is an interesting photograph because I've seen the distance ripples in the water that can look like humps. This is bizarre because it truly looks like a large hump, and there's not like multiple, which would lead you to believe it's just a wave faction. This is a one off hump. Oh, yeah, I do you believe that is her lovely lady lumps. <laughs> I, I don't know that's if not that, that works. This show is bananas. B A N A N A S. This show is bananas. <laughs> All right, go ahead. The first report was in early April when there mm -hmm. were humps seen possibly like the back of a whale and about the mm. length of two saloon cars. And I think we all know how long that is, right, Dave? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Saloon I'm going to move cars. on then. Yeah, the please. register received six reports last year, down mm. from seven in 2021. Mm. But it notes numerous hoaxes and fakes have been set mm. up at Loch Ness over the last hundred years. The no, Loch Ness really? Monster is a selling point, of course, for Inverness, Scotland's Tourism Bureau. It has webcams set up around the lake in case anything unusual occurs. Hmm. But some say the answer to the long debate about a monster may come from climate change. Had you heard this, what? Dave? No. BBC, not the one what? you're thinking about. No, 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 no not no, the no, one no. you're thinking about. All right. BBC News noted Ooh. dry conditions. <laughs> Don't laugh. That, that one. <laughs> that just hit me between the eyes, literally. <laughs> BBC News noted dry <laughs> conditions in Scotland during May dropped Loch Ness to its lowest level in 32 years, Dave. No, no. And I think we all know, right? I mean, Loch Ness is the largest freshwater lake in the region by volume. And, you know, if those of you that have taken a trip with Dave or mm -hmm. are thinking about taking a trip with Dave, you should. I took a trip with Dave many years ago, and we went down a, uh, a – if you're not watching, you have to see Dave just start to smirk when I speak. But we took a trip down Loch Ness from mm -hmm. the north side to the south side, from the east side to the west side, just like Moby and Madonna. West and, side. Right? Yeah. And while you're on the ship, it has a sonar that shoots down below. Right? What does it sound like, Dave? That sonar, folks, if you've never heard it. That is wow. Good. That's pretty That's good. Hmm. And you will see a lot of stuff. So if you haven't gone to Lake Ness, mm -hmm. you, you need know. to go. Lake Ness. Is that anything like Loch Ness? I'm American, Dave. I'm We're American. Amer yeah. I don't American. know if you realize the show is from America. America. So you guys are pretty impressed with my uh, capabilities of making noises? 
We are. Mm-hmm. What's that sound that you do the water drop thing? That's a good mm-hmm. one. That's it's a water like, drop. No, no, but, but it's it like, sounds almost like it, that. No, no, like Ferris Bueller. That's good. That's good. That was actually Cameron, I think, doing it, wasn't it? Where he was. Yeah. Yeah, hitting the hitting the cheek. Well, see, I was an only child, so I played with myself a lot, and I learned okay. to make all these different well, noises. The no, no, next, uh, uh, no to make that. noises. Listen, next brand story. new story came in today. You're not the only one that just got a hot off the presses. I got Mine one. We were ready to go to press tonight, and bam, bam, wham, bam. I get this story. Check it out. Giant ice worm monster has allegedly been spotted in Iceland. Are you ready for this? Wow. All right, here we go. Iceland is usually associated with natural wonders, intertwined with tales of trolls and elves, but now a legendary lake monster has been claimed to be caught on camera in the icy waters of a region filled with lakes and fjords. Does the Loch Ness Monster have unexpected competition? The giant ice worm is known as Lagerflotisjormur. Yeah, and it was spotted by a a local sheep. Yeah, it was uh, spotted by a local sheep farmer who lives with a view overlooking the Icelandic lake. It is said to inhabit. He was making his morning coffee one day when he spotted the creature out in the water, swimming like a snake. He grabbed his phone to try to record it on video. Tales of the lake monster in this region go quite far back in history, with one map on display explained by a museum historian. The map dated back to 1595 and has a notation over the area that says a huge monster lives in these lakes and often appears just before something dreadful is about to happen. So the uh, Lagerfjordslismor Moor is a relation to the uh, uh, Mothman. That's not yeah. Icelandic. That's Swedish. Are you sure? Um, I'm, positive. I'm reading it. Lagerfjordslismor. Uh, yeah, the local legends say that uh, keeping a black slug too near to gold will cause the slug to grow huge, mm. but also the gold along with it, tempting people to accidentally grow these gigantic lake monsters. Skeptics believe it is far more likely a bit of lost rope became frozen in the water, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's right. asking for the your stupid skeptic answers. Thing. Yeah, yeah, the lost rope trick. It's obviously a giant sea <laughs> monster worm. Pig. ice worm. Good God. Pig. All right. It's delicious. Here we go. Let's get to science. It's time to talk science, kids. And our final story of the night. Here we go. Giant cyclone has been spotted for the first time. Yep, you guessed it on Uranus. NASA Ooh. scientists uncovered evidence of a cyclone located at Uranus, North Pole. They spotted a vortex of warmer air swirling beneath the planet's clouds, challenging the notion that Uranus possesses a relatively inactive atmosphere. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Not at my house. I've heard As previously assumed after the Voyager 2 spacecraft flyby in 1986, the identification of a polar cyclone on Uranus was made possible by observing thermal emissions in the form (laughs) of radio waves, (laughs) Space.com reported. Astronomers utilizing the very large array, the VLA, of radio telescopes in New Mexico detected these emissions, providing compelling evidence for the existence of a northern vortex on Uranus. Mm. Polar vortices are commonly found on planets within the solar system, including Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and yes, Eric, now even Uranus has one. Mm. These vortices are believed to form due to high-altitude atmospheric jet streams, although the specifics vary on each planet. The powerful jet streams emitting from Uranus <laughs> should, be, should be of absolutely no shock. <laughs> now, when yeah, Voyager 2 explored Uranus, Eric, it, it detected changes in wind speeds near the pole, <laughs> <laughs> indicating the presence of a polar vortex. Oh. However... The spacecraft did not have the opportunity to observe the impressive North Pole. (laughs) Moreover, studying Uranus has been challenging due to its tilted orbit, which obscures our view of its poles. It's a very shy planet. (laughs) However, since 2015, as Uranus has continued its orbit around the sun, the Hubble Space Telescope captured images of a distinct smoggy cap over Uranus. (laughs) Just stop. (laughs) 
<laughs> this is the article as written. Oh, I you know, this is the actual article as written from space.com. Mm. So let me get back to that. The uh, Hubble telescope <laughs> captured images of a distinct smoggy cap over Uranus, <laughs> providing the first evidence of a polar cyclone in that region. Oh. According to Science Alert, the data have provided a deep look. Mm. That provided a deep look into Uranus. Oh. Analysis of thermal emission data revealed that the circulating air at Uranus North Pole exhibited characteristics of st strong cyclonic power. Oh being yes, both warmer being both warmer and drier. Which I've observed actually, that. When you think yeah. of it, it's kind of a surprise. Being so far from the sun, I would have thought that Uranus would have been more cold and moist mm -hmm. than it would be. Good point. Know, yeah. I, I, I apologize for laughing because I know this that this topic is really uh, important and very it serious is. to Chachi. And I yeah. apologize on air, Chachi, for, for laughing. Yeah. That's, Alex Akins, the lead author of a study published in Geophysical Letters and affiliated with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said these observations of Uranus unveil a more dynamic nature of uranus challenging the perception i think they're using the word maybe once just a little 20 too much. 20 times too much yeah. challenging the perception of it being a mere gas giant akins <laughs> emphasized that there is such more happening beneath the surface portraying uranus as a very complex and active area oh yeah so there you have it folks the uh the news of the day nasa and space just cannot leave way, Uranus alone. What a way to stop, to end the show, rather, uh, Dave. No, 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 no. We are not Wait, stopping what? the show what? there. I, I forgot. We got a fax. We, we got, got a fax. Okay. We got a fax. Oh, wow. Okay. Is this, uh, is this the AOL connective uh, image you sent me? <laughs> this yeah. is a little better, Dave. <laughs> Took a little we while need, to get. We need okay. to get right to this breaking news. Okay. Right now. Sure. Okay. Right now. Boom. It, it turns out, and again, mm -hmm. I just read what I receive via routers or whatever that news service is we get all that, our news from. Yeah, Reuters. Fangled yeah. computers. Yeah. Routers. Mm -hmm. Routers. Yeah. Routers. 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 Yeah. Shooters. AP. It turns Reuters. out. Reuters. Yes. It turns out. And I Can had tell. no effing idea. Mm. Really? It, it turns out Uranus <laughs> takes a pounding more frequently <laughs> than was originally thought. That's impossible. <laughs> no, no, no. <coughs> I have the facts to back it up, Dave. He got Literally, it was faxed Literally, over to you. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Listen, I only read what I get from the service. Obviously. <laughs> okay. It's obvious. obviously. Yeah. All right. I, Continue. <sighs> Tell me about Uranus being pounded well, harder I mean, than Dave, you expected. Dave, you brought up in your story the strange tilt, right? To right. Uranus. Right. Which right. is the photograph I mean, we're looking at. Shows right. my uh, Uranus. Well, is if, is if, I may, if I may. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to shed some light on the mystery of Uranus. And let's be honest, it's got a very strange tilt. It does. Loki yeah, Trout study. notices, hashtag Uranus takes a beating. <laughs> oh, Loki, Loki, come on. There's your hashtag for next week. Yeah, That's a t-shirt waiting Loki, to happen. Loki. <sighs> okay. A recent study published in the scientific journal Nature Astronomy, my Bible, mm -hmm. has provided some compelling answers and revealed that Uranus, Dave, Mm -hmm. Takes a pounding more frequently than we mm -hmm. would have expected. I'm surprised oh, wow. you're still surprised by that. No, Dave, I had no idea till this fax came in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to the study, not my words, Dave, the study I'm Uranus experienced not one but two pounding collisions oh. <laughs> during its formative years. Oh, that's the worst, yeah. that's the worst is, time. Is that's 15 the worst. To 22, if I'm not mistaken. Those are the uh -huh. formative years. Okay. <laughs> right. The first collision involved uh -huh. a body approximately twice the size of Earth, hmm. while the second involved a slightly smaller object, roughly the size of our moon, which goes to show, and I've been preaching this for years <laughs> the size <laughs> doesn't matter, guys. The pounding you take has <laughs> nothing to do with the size. If you were going to stop, I'm trying to read a story. This is, yeah, sorry, the man. It is serious. This the is serious stuff. The pounding that you will take is all about the thrust of said pounding. Right. So, Especially if it's the size of my moon, too. The moon, exactly. right? Yeah. Not just the Earth, the moon. No, Dave. yeah. 
Wow. The effects of these, what I call cataclysmic events, were transformative. Again, oh. 15 to 22 years. <laughs> the formative years. <laughs> they should. I can't do it. I'm just trying to read the story. Okay, sorry. Which, sorry, which Josh. It'd be no surprise to anyone mm-hmm. to realize pounding your anus twice <laughs> in the formative years was bound to have a long lasting. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine? It's a, your anus is only 15 years old. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my god, I can't breathe. Dave. Make it stop. Yes. Your, your anus was only 15 years old. Is that right? That's what but I've been then, told. But then yes. what? the pounding <laughs> continued. Oh, this is what Just the like story nine tells years me. later. Is that what happens? That supposedly oh. the pounding uh-huh. continued based upon the story uh-huh. for seven years. Study. The study. Uh-huh. The study. Studied for seven years. Uh-huh. As the two colliding bodies approached Uranus. <laughs> I've tried so hard. Dave. I can already hear the hate mail being typed <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, my just, God. Uh, the worst part is I'm literally reading it. Anybody can go out and pull the story up. Of the as, study. Right. Yeah. As the two yeah. colliding bodies approached Uranus. <laughs> They unleashed an enormous amount of energy upon oh. impact. <laughs> they always do. Literally spanking Uranus. <laughs> and the intense <laughs> gravitation. <laughs> Who did this study, by the I way? Don't know. I'm reading it. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to read it before getting on air. <laughs> a little roll it could be like someone from the show that just sent it to you and said it was a study. No, 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 no. How I dare you, it. Marty? I, I got it right off of my thermal facts. Oh, but literally, okay. once it spanked Uranus, the intense gravitational forces caused it to tr- tr- to to trilt, trilt, to trilt. I mean, tw- that's not tilt, the word. maybe tilt, tri- oh. tilt dramatically, turning Uranus on its side, almost oh. in the fetal position. They say <laughs> these collisions <laughs> not only altered Uranus's axle, but it what? also had profound what? consequences for its internal structure. Imagine what? the internal part of Uranus. Oh, right, God, it's yeah. going yeah. to cause problems, which yeah. eventually of basically course. turns the overall evolution of Uranus in a different direction. Of course, listen, this groundbreaking this groundbreaking <laughs> research could inspire future generations to study so. Uranus up close. Yeah. This actually comes, Marty, to answer your question. It comes from the scientific journal Nature Astronomy. This is an actual article. Look this up. People. Uh, I wish I, I'm just reading the news. You know what, though? You know what, Dave, Dave up, and, and Chachi? Up. Someone listening to the show, some young 10 year old listening no, to the show is going to say 18, 18, 18, 18 year old. Okay. Is going to think, I'm going to be a scientist one day based off of this, this study that I just heard. Up. And I hope and they so, report right to us every time yes. Uranus is. Exactly. Yeah, you were, yeah. You have a direct link to the Uranus. <sighs> I just God. got pipeline. This story, this story, not my Please story, not, not my stop. words. A study, official study. A study. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Mark, Mark G, you're absolutely right. We're changing lives here. Yeah, yeah we, we are. are. We're a science. Hey, UFOs, this... ghosts, and miracles are taking over the town of Woodstock, Illinois. Mm. Was I done? Yeah, trust me, you so. were done. Oh, my bad, I was oh, done. My oh, my okay. email box is already filled to capacity. <laughs> you're you're at your Gmail <laughs> limit. Yes. <laughs> Paranormal Access Events is hosting the first pop up Paracon Midwest Paranormal Conference in the northwest suburbs of Chicago at the historic, and some even say haunted Woodstock Opera House, located at 121 West Van Buren Street, Woodstock, Illinois, on Saturday, July 8th, from 10 a.m. to 7:30 p.m. This will be an all-day event filled with vendors and professional presentations by paranormal investigators, well-known TV presenters, authors, doctors, psychologists, and priests speaking on all aspects of the paranormal. 
This conference will be hosted by internationally renowned paranormal investigator Chris Fleming from the Discovery Plus and Travel Channel TV series Haunted Scotland, now streaming on Max. He's also known for his many notable TV appearances, spending 23 years on Ghost Adventures, Portals to Hell, Help My House is Haunted, Psychic Kids, and more. The schedule is filled with a variety of paranormal investigators also seen on TV and around Chicagoland speaking about ghosts, hauntings, miracles, near-death experiences, UFOs, and the Chicago Mothman. Paranormal investigator and radio host Dave Schrader from TV's The Holzer Files, Ghosts of Devil's Perch, and Ghost Adventures will also be hosting the Paranormal Six Panel, which includes appearances from Shane Pittman from Travel Channel's The Holzer Files and Netflix 28 Days Haunted, along with Nick Simmons, who also appeared on the Netflix TV series. Chicago's very own author and writer Amelia Cotter will be speaking about haunted Chicago land, along with Illinois MUFON director and researcher Sam Maranto, an expert on UFOs over Chicago and the Mothman sightings. For those who believe in miracles, you won't want to miss Dr. J or Scott J. Kolbaba, MD, author of Amazon's number one selling book, Physicians Untold Stories. He will share true stories from doctors around the world who have experienced miracles, a sixth sense, and the supernatural. Doors open at 10 a.m. and speakers start at 11 a.m. until 7:30 p.m. The cost? Just $30 for adults, $15 for students with ID, and $10 for children 17 and under. To see the complete lineup for this event and purchase tickets, click the link on today's show guide or visit darknessevents.com. I will be there. I hope that I get to see you there and you'll be a part of it. I will be at the USS North Carolina in Wilmington, North Carolina this Saturday, July 1st. And I would love for you to come investigate history with me and the good folks from Get Haunted. All the information is up at my website at darknessevents.com. Folks, before any more breaking news comes, oh no. I just got something new off the facts, Dave. Off the facts again. About the the two breasts of the moon. Could I read the story? (laughs) Thank you, and we'll see you again next week right here on the Paranormal 60. Wednesday night and I'm alone The Paranormal 60's on It's just for paranormal freaks like me With poltergeists and ghosts and blues and UAPs You miss a word, you do a shot It starts to snowball and we laugh a lot It's just like drinking with your TV friends I'll be best out before tonight's show ends Dreaming the aliens are taking me away I'm gonna wake up till sometime late on Saturday. It's Wednesday night and I'm alone. The paranormal 60s on. Traders on. Traders on. Traders on. Shachi and the Colonel and the paranormal. Detective always traders got me and they all will be corrected. He's got protective bracelets and some crazy magic tricks. Even Scully cannot save him from the voice of Stevie Nicks. Traders on. Traders on. Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Now one day Dave might even put me on a show. There's a ghost in my mom's basement, man. I live down there, I know. It's Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Traders on. Traders on. Words is hard.